everyone, it's Josh from Guardian Training Consulting. Welcome to our monthly video. I get a lot of questions about how to travel with firearms, specifically air travel. Can you travel with firearms in air travel? Yes, but you have to do it a proper way. And we're going to discuss that today. So I wanted to take this opportunity to discuss how to travel with, with uh, firearms, specifically air travel, because that is one of the most difficult, uh, perceived difficult ways to travel with firearms. So first and foremost, can you travel with firearms? Yes, you can. So the caveat to this video is this list is not all inclusive. This is based on TSA rules, right, and laws, as well as uh, my personal experiences traveling with firearms for over two years, um, almost every other week, flying with, with firearms to training locations. So the first thing we have to think about when we travel with firearms, specifically air travel, is no firearms, ammunition, or weapons parts are going to make it into your carry-on luggage. All of those items have to go into your checked luggage. So if you wish to travel light and, and not have a checked bag, then you're not gonna be able to take a firearm unless you're an air marshal or you know federal agent or whatever the case may be. So us average citizens are not gonna bring any firearms, ammunition, or weapons parts into our carry-on luggage. It has to be checked. So the first thing is I'm about to go on a trip um, and I'm getting all of my bags packed. I'm getting my Pelican case packed. I'm getting my bag packed, uh, my, my check bags and my carry-ons. So we're gonna just focus on check bags. So the first thing we have to think about is the actual, the actual case itself. So one, it has to be a hard-sided container. So the, the soft-sided pistol containers that fit you know, pistols and, and such like that are not going to, to, to work or are not gonna fly. So we can't, um, even if this is able to lock, we can't take this on the aircraft and store, and store uh, firearms um, as this is as the case. So the first thing you're gonna think about is, is and go for is the factory pistol case. So um, I don't recommend this. One, um, you can see the, the latches fell off, not exactly a super robust case, um, as well as um, if it only locks on one side, you can see here, but this locks on two sides. But if they have the ability to pry this open and get access to your firearm, it will not pass TSA scrutiny. Um, so I don't recommend using the stock pistol case um, or the and then looping it with this with this one loop um, lock or the the gun lock. It's not going to fly. It's not going to it's not going to work. So don't recommend that. So what I recommend is either a Pelican case. I run. Uh, for the longest time, I've ran a 1615 Air, um, and it's an awesome case. So the Pelican series, they're, they're, they're pretty heavy, um, and the 1615 Air is one of the bigger boxes that, that's you know, available. Um, so this thing weighs 35 pounds already, so you're going to be limited in the amount of stuff that you can take to hold to that 50-pound limit if you're willing to pay. Now, if you're flying first class, uh, typically you either... Uh, you get a, a larger weight limit. So the 1615 is great because I can store all of my rifles. I can store my handguns and all that. I actually remove the uh, the foam from both the top foam and the bottom foam from my case. The reason why is because it one, it adds weight, and two, I can store more stuff if it's not foamed. Now, if you have guns that you really want to take care of that you don't want to get banged around, all of that matter, then please put the foam in. But these are my working tools um, and I've traveled with them for, for thousands of miles. It, it really doesn't bother me. So again, the guns don't have to be secured in foam. Um, that's, a, that's, a mis, that's a misnomer. The magazines um, just cannot be, cannot be loaded. So um, as long as you have unloaded magazines and an unloaded firearms, you can store you know, your firearms with your timers. Like I run a, a CED uh, timer. I'll have my, my IFAC, my range IFAC kit um, going from there. Let's address this real quick. Can this IFAC, which has, you know, a tourniquet, trauma, uh, trauma gauze, stuff like that, to include trauma shears, can these go on your carry-on luggage? Absolutely. They can go in your carry-on luggage. I have never had a problem. I've had this trauma kit for years and years, and it's gone in my, my, my carry-on luggage no problems. So this can go in your carry-on luggage. And I recommend having a bleeding control kit because God forbid if something happens on the aircraft, you're not going to land the aircraft in time before somebody either bleeds out or, or has some uh, traumatic incident and you can't do anything about it. So 
Um, you can travel with IFACs in your carry-on luggage, but I just keep this one. This is my range one that I keep in my, my check bags. Um, so the first and foremost is make sure all of your firearms are unloaded. So magazines out, chambers empty. If it's a revolver, all of the charge holes in the cylinder are empty. And then your, your firearms can be stowed anywhere. So can I put clothing inside this case with my firearms? Yes, I can. If I wish to do that and put a blanket over top of this and put clothing over, over this, I can perfectly do that. Now, the airlines will tell you you can't, put, you can't put other belongings with your firearms. That's incorrect. The people that make the, the rules pertaining to firearm storage is, is the TSA. Now, the airlines will make some different policies pertaining to uh, how much ammo you can bring in, but you can put ammunition and guns and clothing in the same bag. That's, that's perfectly, you're in the right there. So ammo boxes can go in your box, and I recommend that. So once you have your firearms unloaded, everything's good to go. You store everything. Um, you store everything in your box, okay? And now let's talk about ammunition real quick. So you cannot do this like I do with my range, my range ammo. You cannot do that Bubba's bag of bullets. You can't do that. So the first thing, first thing is take all the ammo if you're gonna you're gonna store that ammo one they have to go in either factory containers or in this this plastic hard sided container that that has a slot for each round okay so you can't have the the bag of bullets you can't have loose ammunition uh, flying around your case um, now the airlines will tell you how much ammo you can actually pack either it's a round count or it's a weight limit. So uh, make sure you follow that. So think about the TSA policies as the over um, arching policies and then each airline has their, their little nuances. But as a general perspective, TSA is the one that is in charge of security. The airline takes you from point A to point B. So once everything's set here, <clears throat> you know, again, the other thing I do take out is all of my lithium batteries out of all of my lights put those in your carry-on luggage. So they're gonna ask you if there's any lithium batteries. So that's your CR123 batteries. Take those out of your lights, take those out of your optics, put those in your carry-on, uh, loose in your carry-on, perfectly normal, but you cannot have this in uh, checked luggage. They don't allow that. So uh, once I have everything set, if I have everything set, take my ammo, put it in my case, lock down my case, with the latches. So I'm almost there. So what I recommend is just buying very lightweight locks. Okay. Um, these are just Brinks brass, brass locks. Um, and you've got to lock each side because if I lock one side, if I walk lock, lock one side and they have the ability to pry this open, it's not going to work. Okay. So let's talk about this real quick. Um, heavy duty locks. All this does is just deter somebody from getting into your guns. The, 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 it's, it's not going to stop people from getting into your guns. If somebody wants to get into your guns, they're just going to just going to cut the locks. What this is is to, to comply with TSA. Now I get a lot of questions about do I buy TSA locks? Absolutely not. I say that again. Absolutely not. This key that I have is the one and only key for both of these locks. They're keyed for the they're they're, they're both keyed the same. I am supposed I am the only one who is supposed to have possession of this key. Um, and if somebody else has possession of it, they need to be in my presence. So I do not want TSA to come into my bag when I'm not there. So first things first is I lock everything up, lock both sides, and I'm good to go. So now once I'm here and, and ready to go with my case, I go to the airport. Okay, I will go to the airport and I will go to the ticket counter. And then I will meet with the ticket agent and I will from the airline and say, I I'm declaring firearms in this case. Okay. Now they may ask you to look at the firearms. Um, they are not in the business of looking at your firearms, but if they just follow their orders, but I have actually had some ticket agents actually ask me to take out my firearms and render them safe. So again, you're going to unlock your case when you get to the ticket counter, put it up on the scale, you're going to unlock both, both there. Okay. I unlatch it, but I don't open it. The reason why is, you know, think about how people, how people are with firearms, much less firearms in a post 9-11 uh, airport. So I leave it unopened 
and then they're going to give me uh, a form, which is an affidavit. It's a little card. And I'm going to show that on the screen here. So then once I fill out the affidavit, which then states that my firearms are unloaded, I have, uh, I have unloaded magazines. Uh, my, all my stuff is, is stored properly. All I'm doing is signing that I'm certifying that this bag is in compliance with, with TSA policy. Um, they'll either put that tag on the outside or they'll, they'll put the tag on the inside. If the ticket agent does not tell you to handle the firearms, do not handle the firearms. If they tell you to handle the firearms and render them safe, follow their orders, but they're, they're not supposed to do that. That's the last thing you want to do is tell everybody and tell, telegraph everybody that there's firearms in here. People are already nervous and, and, and on edge flying already. You don't need to make them any more nervous. Then once, once the, the case is closed and our, our affidavits filled out, we lock it up. Okay. We will lock it up with our locks. And I keep the key. Now I fly out of Phoenix. So Phoenix deals with a lot of firearms, you know, every week, every day. There are some airports that don't like I've flown out of California. I've flown, flown out of States. that just, they, they don't have a lot of people that carry firearms. So Phoenix has a great policy. So what they do is once a ticket agent, um, completes everything, gets your boarding passes and gets everything checked in, they're going to walk you to another area, which is operated by TSA. So, they're going to walk you to the, the TSA area. And then once the, the, uh, you get there, you're going to roll your case here or, or have your handheld case. Um, and then you're going to meet with the TSA. They're going to ask you for the key and they're going to open the case in your presence. Okay. That's how you properly do it. They should not be asking you for the key behind closed doors, you giving them the key and then opening the case without you present. That's improper. Now, have I dealt with it? Yes. Have I made complaints? Yes. Have they gone anywhere? No, they haven't. So they're going to, what they're going to do is going to ask you for the key. They're going to put it up on a table. They're going to unlock it more than likely. What they're going to do is going to swab the, the, uh, the ring of the bag. So the ring of the, the case. So they're going to, they're going to take like their cotton swab and then wipe it. They're going to put it into a machine. And if it alerts, and if it alerts, which could happen, right? Because this case goes to neither range. A lot of people touch it. Um, it's just the way it is. If it alerts, then they're going to start taking stuff out and they're perfectly willing to do that, but they should not be handling your firearms, manipulating your firearms. All they're looking for is, is improper storage. Then once, um, TSA says you're good to go, they're going to close the case up. And then once they close the case up, and lock it, they lock it, they're gonna give you the key back and then they're gonna take the case and then it's gonna be sent to your plane. So that's how you do it. Now, have I been to um, an airport that I make it through TSA security, I check my bag and then when I get to the gate, I've been asked to get relinquish my key? Yes, they shouldn't be doing that, but they still do it. And if push comes to shove, you, you see how far you want to push it. You may, you may lose your flight, but I, I have, I didn't lose my flight. I just gave them the key and, and reported it to TSA after the fact. So that's how you transport a larger case. So let's talk about just transporting a handgun. So, um, I have a smaller, uh, Pelican style case, um, for just transporting say a handgun. So like a handgun, um, just a handgun and you know, a magazine, say it's a concealed carry perspective. I will make sure the, the firearm is unloaded. I then store the, 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 uh, the magazines. And then if I have any carry ammunition or any of that matter, then I put it in there. Um, now you notice I don't have a lot of, um, storage. So here's, here's the question I always get asked. Hey, Josh, to save money, because I have to pay for, for, for checked bags. Can I, can I do this? Can I lock? can I do this? You know, can I take my, my locks, say I'm not traveling with my big behemoth of a Pelican case and I'm just traveling with a handgun. Can I do this? Same thing goes, go to the airport. You have your, you have your uh, handgun case. You declare a firearm. Okay. You're going to unlock it. Once you fill out your affidavit, you close it back up. You then lock it both sides.
Once I'm here, I'm good to go. Can I put this in another bag? Can I put this in another bag with clothing or uh, toiletries or whatever the case may be? Yes, you can. So they're gonna, I suggest having it on the top because when you roll this, this whole thing together to the ticket agent, you're going to have to open this up. You're gonna have to open the case up. But then once you're done checking it, can you put it back in with your clothing and it's locked and sealed? Yes. Um, the eight ticket agents will tell you they can't do that. Yes, you can. I can do that. As long as it fits the, the 50 pound weight limit or whatever your weight limit is, you then zip it back up and it goes to your check bag, okay? It goes checked. So the other thing that they will probably do on the bag is on the top where, where your, your, your handle is or whatever the case may be, they will actually put a return to BSO, a big red tag that says return to BSO. What is BSO? Well, that's the baggage security office. So what I don't want to do, what, what I don't want this bag to do is when the... Uh, the plane lands and I'm disembarking the plane, I don't want this bag or my big Pelican case um, to, to go on the, the baggage carousel. The last thing that I want is, again, if you see a Pelican case, what do you think? You may think guns, you may think camera equipment. Either way, if I'm spending almost, almost $400 for a case this size, then the items within the case have to be more expensive than the case itself. So the last thing that I want is this going on the baggage carousel and then some person just picking up the bag because they don't check your ID. So what that bag, what that tag does is it tells the, the luggage carriers when they take the, the luggage off the, um, the, the, air, the uh, airplane is they put it on a special cart that goes to the lost or stolen or uh, the baggage security office, that office where the luggage is you know, lost or uh, stolen or, or other secured luggage. Then if this is your only check bag, you're not gonna to go to the carousel, you're gonna to go to the airline's baggage security office. You're gonna tell them, hey, I have a bag um, that's supposed to be turned in here. Make sure you have either a driver's license, a passport, or some type of photo ID. And then once they, they bring your case out, they're gonna ask you for your ID, they're gonna check the ID to the, the tag number, and then once they confirm your ID, then you take the bag and you go about that, okay? So that's flying in a nutshell. So let's talk about laws real quick. The first thing I get asked is, wait, hey, Josh, um, do, you know, do I have to abide, do I have to abide by the laws of the states that I'm traveling to as well as through? Yes, okay? Let's give you an example. Say I have to fly to Florida, right? Which I've done myriad of times with, with firearms. I, but, but say in this example, I have a layover in New York right? LaGuardia, JFK, or New Jersey, or Newark, right? So I have a layover and say I, I have a layover for a couple hours, but then I, I, or I, or a couple minutes and I miss that flight. Do you think this 17 round magazine is going to be a trouble in New York? Yes, it is because there's, you know, some States have seven round magazine capacities. Some have 10, uh, New Jersey does not allow hollow points or, or expanding ammunition. They only allow full metal jacket. So these are things you have to think about. So if I do a layover in New York and the firearms or the components are illegal in New York and I do a layover and I miss my flight, I could be subject to that state's gun laws because I'm staying in that state. Could I be arrested? Yeah, there's been numerous stories of people being arrested with regards to uh, illegal possession. So not only think about the, the state that you're flying, you're flying into, but also through. Another example is I just flew to uh, New Hampshire, but I had to land in Logan International Airport. Where is Logan International Airport? Boston, Massachusetts. If you actually look at the USCCA app, you will see the difference between New Hampshire state gun laws and Massachusetts gun laws are drastically different. So do you think that I have to abide by the laws of Massachusetts when transporting or having different types of firearms components? Yes, I have to use the most restrictive state because if if I get caught with, with illegal weapons or that, I'm, I'm subject to arrest. So just food for thought on that. Again, this list is not all inclusive. I just wanted to answer these, these couple questions 
um, on how to travel with firearms. If you guys have any more questions, comments, concerns, uh, bitches, gripes, moans, please um, comment below, uh, contact us, and we'll do what we can to help you. I'm Josh from Guardian Train Consulting. Have a safe day. Thank you.